What's up guys, don't forget to subscribe. This is my game, Dreams Fighter. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying it. I wanna make it the Smash Bros. of Dreams. Um, I'm going in with it as much as I possibly can. There's like 11 to 12 fighters. Traditional fighting games have around, let's say 20. So we're gonna try to get to that amount. Um, this right here is the hitbox tutorial, uh, sort of. It's a different type of hitbox. This hitbox is actually the game maker solving glitch. As you can see, as we get next to a wall, we're not clipping next to the wall in any way, shape, or form. In game maker, you can sometimes slide up the walls, up the walls, if um, you're like walking into it, if that makes sense. But Dreams has a very, very easy way to fix that. Check out my hitbox tutorial with the trigger zones if you guys want to know a way to use trigger zones as hitboxes. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, you just, in, in a nutshell, you don't want your sculpture to be collidable with, um, with uh, or your character to be collidable with whatever your enemy is, whatever you're gonna label that just make it pretty much collidable with um with um you know the ground and stuff and then you can layer over the ground with what it really is if that makes sense and then turn that invisible and that's what the walls are so this hitbox is actually really big that's what's detecting this wall it doesn't detect this guy what detects this guy is a trigger zone that's what detects its attacks but only when he's attacking does that turn on you can use this right here in unison with impact sensors if you don't want to use trigger zones. So that's what the impact sensor is going off of. But sometimes you can't do that because um, if you're using an impact sensor, then that means that this right here will pretty much be too big and it'll collide with the bubble instead of the puppet, if that makes sense which is why I use trigger zones as hitboxes for attacks. I use this as more like um, wall detection. And the first tutorial that I made on this, um, pretty much uh, it covered this, but it talked about using impact sensors as the thing that sense attacks. You can do that if you want to, but if you do that, this cannot be too big. And you'll probably run into glitches running into walls and stuff. I think that's more for a 3D platformer that's okay. It depends on what kind of game you are actually making. Um, since I'm making a fighter where you can't go outside of the boundaries, it didn't work for me. So I just did this route and I figured it out on my own, on my own. This is why we're making this tutorial now. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, you usually want the capsule. I think it's called a collision capsule or collision shape, whatever. You usually want it like right above the feet, but you can mess around with it and make it as low as possible. You just don't want to make it to where it's hard for the character to walk. And then the thing you want to mess around with after that is the walkable slope angle and the sliding friction. That, wa that wa uh, works off of that. And uh, that's what's making it to where it can walk easily. Usually if you turn this down all the way, um, he can't walk at all. But if you turn it up, he's like really fast or it's the other way around. But that's what the walk, uh, the slope angle. And then, you know, this is friction and stuff. So you can mess with that. That's pretty much how the walking works in um, combination with the collision capsule. And then you have your density. I think if you group things together, then that can make it to where this thing weighs more, I think. I think that's what happens i guess not but um pretty much that's uh the collision capsule and yes that is the hit box for if you're using the impact sensor check out my journey's ps4 labels tutorial and check out my how to make custom labels tutorial if you guys need more information on that pretty much labels are th the way you would think they are um if i were to label our base character here and this is his uh thing just press l1 and uh, square on your puppet or press l1 and x and then l1 and square until this pops up you might have to press l1 and x a few times give it the label so if this right here is chosen to collide with uh the label friend it would do something like this as you can see because that's how big the hip bubble is, which is why I use the trigger zones to do stuff like that. 
Another thing that you might want to know is you should also turn this off. I usually turn this off um, and turn off these if you want to also. But I think center of gravity is something important to talk about here too, since that can mess with the hip bubble thing. That's pretty much uh, going to affect how low he is to the ground. If you raise this up, if you heighten up, he's, he's gonna be all the way up here, so, uh, or lower it. So that's what that is for. And then you can mess around with the rest of the stuff as you see fit, gravity and stuff like that. Um, it's just up to you to figure out what you want. And usually if you have both of the things collidable, that means that it'll collide off of this and then he would collide off of that if they were both uh, colliding and labeled friend. Um, but if you have only one collidable, then he's just colliding with pretty much, um, he's the one that's colliding with it, but he's still kind of able to clip through it, but, uh, not, but, but not entirely because, you know, only one of them is set to collidable, but it, it's sort of the way it works, if that makes sense. That is the way it's working. So that should be everything. Just use trigger zones for traditional hitboxes. You can use the trigger zone the way I have it. So here's how, I, check out, just check out my trigger zone hitbox tutorial, but in a nutshell, the trigger zone is off unless he's attacking, and the uh, keyframe inside of here turns the thing on to where it can detect it. You can also just put trigger zones inside of the attacks themselves like I have here. Try to open one up. Let me go ahead and find one. Light attack. So like I have here, there's a trigger zone inside of here, and pretty much the hitbox only appears whenever it's on like the right part of the segment of the attack, and it's only like that big. But then the attack, pretty uh, that trigger zone, if it detects this character, and the settings of this trigger zone are set to this right here, so it has to detect these, uh, you know, body parts. And if it does detect that, then pretty much it does damage. So this is a variable representing how much damage it does. If it might be a health manager for you. Then the uh, knockback animation, then the uh, thing that knocks it back. That's what this is all pretty much connected to. Um, and sometimes it works to make it to where this is on both. And this right here is also on both. That way it can sense it correctly. Sometimes you have to set that if these things are not collidable. Or if they're invisible or whatever. Whatever it is, just uh, look right here for the detection zone. And that should uh, match that up or it might not matter in this case since, you know, it's uh, detecting an element, which is that. So, But just in case, you know, that's in the label section. Um, other than that... That's pretty much what hitboxes are for and how you can use them for pretty much, um, you know, anything. Again, you can um, L1 and X, hope I didn't mess with anything, L1 and X, and then uh, for individual uh, parts of the sculpture, after you have this marquee thing down here, you can just press L1 and square, and you can mess with this stuff, uh, the actual um, parts of the uh, sculpture. You mess with that, mess with this too. This stuff's important to mess with, or if you want to make this collidable for the foot area, you can try that also. Raise the density for each thing if you want to. All that stuff can matter. And you can make your own hitboxes just for that thing also. So this is the hitbox tutorial. Check out the Trigger Zone hitbox tutorial for how to make fighting games with hitboxes completely. This right here is how, basically the wall detection and pretty much everything in a nutshell, but basically mainly that wall detection stuff. Uh, I really wanted to redo that video, mainly because uh, a lot of people thought I was rambling in that video and I do take my time out to actually make my tutorials as incredible as possible for you guys. So I hope this helps. And I hope since now that I know a lot about dreams, um, my explanation is better. 
with Dream, so it might be Super Dream Spider, but with, I'm calling it Dream Spider or something for right now. With this game, there's a lot of characters. Oh, even this is a character. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. He has three basic attacks. One's the uh, swing. One's the uh, charge attack, if I can get it going. There we go. It has cooldown if you uh, make it to where you use the possess grab thing. It gives the uh, those two attacks cool down after, you, after that one's done. But yeah, it's pretty cool. There's that character. And then one more cool character for you guys. Um, Fox is a cool character, but not one I'm trying to show. That one's a cool one. That one's a cool one. That one's cool. That one's not going to be in it. That one's cool. I guess Pip. So yeah, we got some um, really cool stuff going on here for this game. And as you can see, the bar goes down the more you use stuff. Um, so really cool way to dodge, really uh, intuitive. I'm trying to make it marvelous for you guys. And I hope I can make a multiplayer. Follow me on Dreams. I'm Young Text YouTube on Dreams. Subscribe to me here on YouTube. Check out my channel playlist for any of the tutorials on logic, sculpting, animation, music, and more. I hope this helps you with your collisions if you were having trouble with um, collisions and um, hitboxes, wall stuff. This is how I do it. Tell us in the comment section your ways of doing it. And check out my fighting game tutorial if you need help making Dreams PS4 fighting games. And check out my combos tutorial. I'm going to have a new art tutorial on how to trace 3D objects and make uh, artwork that way also. So I'm going to have that soon. And um, just... Be on the lookout for stuff and follow me on dreams subscribe to me on youtube stay tuned for more creations i've had like five other games created outside of what i'm creating now so your boy does know what he's doing took me a while to get to this point uh, dreams came it's like seven months to get to this point seven months but with the tutorials that i have and media molecular putting out um, you guys should be able to get to this point a lot faster than I did. And I knew no logic about Little Big Planet, but that logic is almost the same as the logic in here, as I have Little Big Planet 3, and I just popped it in and checked. So, um, just so you guys know, I sculpted that also. So, we got all kinds of tutorials and artwork and stuff for you guys. Peace out. Hope this helps. Have a nice day.